What we have here is a scene that is at once literal and symbolic. Symbolic because all believers must go through a time when we must wrestle with God over control of our own lives. If you haven't, you will. And if we are to truly apprehend that life which God has for us, a time must come when by our own choice, through absolute surrender, we must leave our tattered history behind and start a new history with God as the Lord of our lives. It has to come. Yet invariably, all those scars and disabilities of the past will come with us, and we're going to have to deal with it. Even more, sometimes we're going to pay a dear price to leave behind our rebellious ways and go forward with a new life in Christ. This was the case with Jacob, as he now inherited a permanent disability as he crossed over from a foreign place where he didn't belong into the promised land where God wanted him to be. And how I wish it was so that when we first recognize our salvation or when after years of having been saved, we finally decide to live out this wonderful redeemed life that our earthly past was as dead as our old natures. Too often, I think, well-meaning pastors tell converts their slates have been cleaned. What they forgot to tell them is that although we've been spiritually, eternally forgiven, that doesn't usually end the natural consequences of what our sin natures have caused. In some way or another, we will live out the rest of our lives regret, re regretting this foolishness before we came to believe. Jacob will walk with a limp for all of his remaining days, an inescapable testament to his having fought with God for nearly a hundred years until he finally submitted instead of attempting to achieve a balance of power. Isn't that what we really try to do? We try to achieve a balance of power with God. Now, I can't help but recall my Ishmaelite, my Arab brother in Christ, Tass's story about coming to the Lord. Some of you know him, I think. May you remember him. Many of you, I think, don't. About how as a Palestinian, he was fighting against Israel. And he, would, he told me about how the Arabs were despondent over never seeming able to defeat the Jews. And for him, as with a typical Muslim Arab, which is what he was, living today, there was this deepest frustration and anger that leads to irrational hatred against Israel because it's incomprehensible to them that 200 million Arabs can't defeat 6 million Jews. It just doesn't make sense that the combined Arab armies that dwarf Israel's were defeated time after time. And it brought nothing but humiliation, shame to the Arab world. And after coming to Christ, which is an amazing story in itself, Tass suddenly realized, he told me, why the Arabs and the Palestinians had never been able to defeat Israel. He finally understood that the Arabs and the Muslims who thought they are, that their enemy was the Jews had all this time been fighting against God. And when we fight God, there is absolutely bubkus, zero, nada chance of victory on our part. We are not going to win. Oh, but I tried. In the most ironic way, our victory in God only occurs by means of our defeat. 
our unconditional surrender. It's the only way it happens. This is exactly what we see happening in this scene with Jacob. And it has happened or will happen to every believer who finally surrenders to Jehovah's will. 